What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Geekcom GT1 Mega. On paper, this thing should be packing some really good performance. It's got a 16 core, 22 thread CPU, it's got Wi-Fi 7, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, USB 4, and they are offering a couple different variants over on their website. And I gotta say the Geekcom has really stepped up their game when it comes to designing these mini PCs. I love the look of their new models that are hitting the market. Very minimalistic, but overall, I mean, it's a very good looking mini PC. Now inside of the box, along with the GT1 Mega, we're gonna get a mounting bracket, hardware, six foot HDMI cable, and our small form factor 120 watt power supply. This is using a barrel jack, not USB type C, so we can get plenty of power over to this thing. And when it comes to IO up front here, we've got four USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A ports. We've also got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and of course our power button. Over here on the left hand side, full size SD card reader, and this is an SD 4.0 reader. Over on the right hand side, not much else is going on, but we do have a Kensington lock. And of course, around back, we've got our power input, dual full size HDMI. We also have dual USB 4, and both of these will run it up to a 40 gig protocol. Dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. We've got another full size USB 3.2 port and USB 2.0. In total, we can add four displays to this unit, utilizing both of these HDMI ports and both of the USB 4 ports. Before we move any further, I wanted to give you a look at the internals, and getting in here is actually pretty easy. With the feet, they actually use these little rubber grommets, so you can pull them out and put them back in super easily. Four screws under that. Once we take the bottom off, we've actually got our cooler plate, and to remove this, we'll need to take out four more Phillips head screws. And getting right down to it, you can see we've got dual channel SODIMM RAM. This does have one 2280 M.2 SSD slot. It's PCIe 4.0, up to two terabytes. And we've also got another M.2 slot, but this is a 2242. It is PCIe 4.0, and you can add a smaller drive in here, no problem at all. Geekcom is offering the GT1 Mega with two different CPU options, but the one we have here is powered by the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. 16 cores, 22 threads, and with this we get 6 performance cores up to 5.1 GHz, 8 efficiency cores up to 3.8, and 2 low power efficiency cores up to 2.5. It does have the Intel AI Boost NPU up to 1.4 gigahertz. We've also got built-in Intel Art Graphics up to 2.35 gigahertz. You can add up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600 megahertz. We've got that one M.2 PCIe 4.0 2280 slot, and we've also got that other 2242 slot. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.4, and this is actually running Windows 11 Pro right out of the box. First things first, I wanted to take a look at the BIOS here. And as you can see from the top, we've got main, security, boot. We can set this up with secure boot, disable it, all the good stuff. Now, usually we've got an advanced section, but the main thing we need here is actually in the main section. So if we go down here, we've got our power mode, quiet mode, around 35 watts, normal mode, 45, and performance mode is going to take us up to 60, 65 watts. I want to be in performance mode. ERP is disabled from the factory. Wake on LAN, AC power control. You can set this up to automatically come on. I'm just gonna leave it to always off right now. System configuration info just gives us a rundown on what we've got here with that Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. Usually when a BIOS is locked down like this, I'm not a huge fan of it, but at least from here, we've got our power mode and that's gonna be one of the main things here to get the best performance out of this mini PC. So for all of my testing, we will be in performance mode. So far, everything's looking pretty good. As you can see, we've got that Ultra 9 185H, 16 cores, 22 threads, 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600, and of course the Intel Art Graphics. Now, from the BIOS, we couldn't allocate any memory over here, but you can see that shared GPU memory is up to 18 gigs because we've got a 32 gig system. As you saw, I did go into the BIOS and enable performance mode. Uh, from CPU-Z, I want to show you, if we stress this out right over here, CPU package power, this jumps up to 70 watts, and uh, it's not a sustained 70, it's actually a sustained 64 watts, but we've got that boost period, and it does last for quite some time. So yeah, I mean, we can get some really good clocks on the CPU and GPU with this thing. 
In terms of everyday performance, I've always said it with these Core Ultra chips, uh, they're really quick. I mean, if you're looking for an everyday desktop use case scenario, web browsing, email checking, 4K video playback, this thing definitely has you covered, especially with that 185H. Now we've got that GT1 Mega, they do offer this with a 155H, up to two terabytes of storage and up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. But they also offer a bunch of other Intel powered mini PCs and AMD. Next up, let's go ahead and check out some 4K video playback from YouTube. So we'll full screen this, make sure we're at 4K, stats for nerds, view, frames dropped. Got two on that initial load in, but this is kind of normal. If I would have let it buffer there or just kind of reset it from 1440 back up to 4K, we wouldn't see those drop frames in throughout. Even if this was set up in quiet mode, running at only 35 watts, we wouldn't have an issue with 4K playback from YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, HBO. And if you want to run your own 4K videos from an internal drive or external, this 185H will handle it just fine. And since this is an ARC powered mini PC, we do have access to the Intel ARC Control Center. I'm fully updated right now. Got some games we're going to be testing out here. Performance, not much in the way of tweaking and tuning this iGPU from here, but we do have an in-game overlay. And if we go up to our global settings, we can set this up for advanced, and we can enable adaptive tessellation, which does help in some games. Uh, I mean, we're working with a lower-end iGPU, so enabling something like this to kind of, you know, maximize the quality versus performance does help out. The next thing I want to take a look at are some benchmarks that I ran on the GT1 Mega, and the first one here is Geekbench 5. Single core coming in with a 2,572, multi 12,862. And I kind of expected this. I mean, these scores are looking great, but we are in that performance mode with that boost up to 70 watts. Taking a look at some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, Night Raid scoring a pretty decent 29,743. And I also ran Time Spy with an impressive 3,952. So with these synthetic benchmarks, yeah, this Intel Arc i GPU does kind of beat out the uh, 780M and something like the ROG Ally, but these are synthetics, and now it's time to see how this thing handles real-world gaming. First on the list, we've got Spider-Man Remastered at 1080p medium with XESS set to balanced. And if you're not familiar with XESS, this is uh, Intel scaling technology, sort of like FSR, but for Intel, actually it works with NVIDIA or Intel. Up in the top left hand corner, we've got Afterburner, and you can see that even though this boosts up to 70 watts, we're around 60 watts on average with this unit here while playing these games at 1080p. Gotta say, seeing some pretty good performance here with Spider-Man Remastered. The next one, we've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p medium XESS set to performance, and I still test this on these Intel chips because we've really been trying to get over that 60 FPS mark. And with this, we actually got an average of 62. Intel is constantly updating their Arc GPU drivers. And yeah, I mean, I can really tell over time we're seeing a really nice bump in performance here. Checking out Fallout 4, 1080p, medium, and we don't need any scaling with this. You'll see it dip every once in a while, but if that FPS counter wasn't on, I really wouldn't notice it. It plays great on these Arc i GPUs. Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, 1080p, XESS set to performance. Obviously, we had to take this down just a bit, and we're not quite at a constant 60 with it when there's a lot of effects on screen. Now, indoors, just running around, yeah, it'll run at 60 all day long, but as soon as we get some enemies and particles on screen, you'll see it dip, so I'd say around 900p would be great, or we could take it down to low settings. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium with XESS set to performance. Now, I've always had kind of an issue with Arc iGPUs in this game here. I mean, they've always kind of run over 60 with the correct settings, but when you compare this to something like the Radeon 780M, if we were able to take up, let's say, the 8845HS with that same iGPU to 70 watts, this would be running at over 100 FPS. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077. 
low XESS set to performance, and while we're over that 60 mark, we did really have to drop it on down. We could go with FSR frame generation and probably get around 90 FPS, but I've been doing a lot of testing with AMD's frame generation and these Arc i GPUs. I've run into some issues. It kind of feels like it's just slowing the game down in certain situations, so I wanted to stay away from that. We did have to add that scaling. So overall, the GT1 Mega is a great performer, but when it comes down to it, I mean, it's definitely expensive for what we've got here. When you consider that, you know, the second generation or Series 2 Intel Core Ultra chips are on the market right now. The 185H for everyday use case scenarios does work great. Web browsing, email checking, you could definitely do some photo editing here, 4K video playback. And as you saw, I mean, you can game on this iGPU. So in the end, it's really up to you. I mean, do you need 16 cores and 22 threads to get your everyday tasks done? Not really. I mean, you could go with something lower end, something that costs a bit cheaper. But if you're interested in learning a little more about the Geekcom GT1 Mega, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.